All right, guys, we're gonna change out the weights and the belt on our 50cc Genuine Rough House. This is the 2015. The gray one is the uh, 2017, but they're both the same. And also gonna put a uh, new battery in this one. I haven't had a battery in probably over a year and a half now. Uh, I'll show you that you don't even need a battery in these scooters. You can ride them without them as long as you have a secondary kickstart. It's gonna be a 5 16 You don't have to take this off. Uh, I already did the gray scooter and I thought you had to take off the kick. I had a scooter before where you had to do that, but you don't have to take off the kick. in there. Fourteen millimeter for that and that. Terrible. Uh, here, 
these are. Wait. Let's see how bad a shape they are. I always buy a pack of these also. pretty bad so let me find one that's really bad so you can see the difference these should be 7.5s but I got sevens to put back in so I get a little bit more acceleration all right so you can see the, the flat spots that are on them all See the difference in the plastic here? In pretty bad shape. But not terrible. I've seen worse. I got six of them. Always put the same amount back in. So I got seven grams, so we're gonna put them. All six of them back in. So, these will go back on the areas with the extra, look like a square area there. Like so. The other ones were very loose, falling off. They usually wear out. These cost nothing to buy a pack of these. You can find them anywhere. Just put variator parts and you'll find them. All right, now I'm gonna line those up with the. There we go. I'm gonna we'll slide this puppy back on. Keep it tight inside there so they don't fall out. Now this scooter doesn't have a shim on it. The other scooter, the gray scooter had a shim on it because it was an old rental and they put a shim on there so that they couldn't get a good top speed. This was an old rental also, but somebody has taken it off of this scooter. It looks like a little plastic thing. You can take it off of there so uh, it doesn't keep the belt up high. It's faster acceleration, but it's a lower top speed. Uh, this belt's obviously been changed before, but I, I got the OEM that comes, that's the size it's supposed to be on the Roughhouse 50cc. It looks like they got the right size, even though the numbers are different. Uh, this is the number it's supposed to be. And that comes from Genuine's website. And what we'll do is we'll make sure you get the arrows right. There we go. 
make sure these are on the outside, these little burrs, because that's for your kickstart to grab onto and spin this variator. Is the deal with that? There we go. Need a little love, a little bit of love juice in it. All right, let's see if we can't get this back lined up. The way it should be. There we go. Right here's a spot for your screwdriver or your finger if it will come out loose enough. I want you to look. We don't have no battery. That's why you always get a scooter with the secondary start. I could turn this one this way actually. This is your fuse. It looks fun. It looks all right. Well, that's going to be it. And this is how I do it. This doesn't mean you should do it this way or if you have a better way to do it, keep doing it your way.
All right, so change the belts and the weights in the variator on both scooters. They're running 10 times better. I thought there was an issue with the batteries because uh, I was hooking the maintainer I have up to them and it kept saying that they were fully charged and then I, you know, I put them in there and nothing was happening. But once I took the scooter around a little bit, everything started coming to life. So uh, I'm guessing they were just a little bit dead from shipping or sitting on a shelf somewhere and, and uh, just didn't have the volts. I didn't take the meter out and test them. I just figured the maintainer would let me know it automatically popped up that they were charged. But I, I think there's something wrong with that maintainer. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to check it out on one of the cars I have, uh, make sure make sure it's okay. Uh, the belts are good, scooters are running a lot better. I've got lighter weights this time, so they were, they were 7 grams instead of 7.5, which uh, it made a little bit of a difference, but not much. Uh, not, as, not as much of a top speed, but not enough for me to really notice. Uh, Took a ride on mine around the island. You'll see some footage of that, and they doing uh they doing good. Uh, my wife is loving hers. Uh, of course, she didn't have any air in her tires, so uh, change that out. Or actually, change it. Added air to her tires, so hers rides a lot better. And she has road tires on hers. Uh, my rough house still has the the knobby looking. Uh, off-road looking tires on mine. I don't know, uh, hers rides a little bit smoother because she has actual road tires. But, I like the knobby tires better. Uh, there's a lot of sand and uh, crushed coral, dust in the roads. Uh, when you're taking a sharp turn, I've, I've ate it before. So those tires help a lot with grip whenever you come over stuff like that at a fast pace. Uh, other than that, man, uh, that was pretty quick. Pretty, uh, wasn't too bad. I've done it before, but like I said, so, some scooters are different, some aren't. The one thing I want to tell people is, is if you buy a new scooter, Yamaha, Honda, whatever, pay the extra for the secondary kickstart option because these companies are starting to make them without them and if you lose your battery they're only this big you know they're little bitty batteries you saw it if they die if you don't ride them long distance so you keep starting it and going just a little bit up the road and stopping it starting it with the electric start and going back home and, and you do that too much you know you're not giving it enough time you're not running it enough to charge the battery back up before it dies. If you don't have that secondary kick start, you're not going to be able to uh, do anything. You have to, you have to, you know, have somebody help you push it, push it home, or get it towed home. Or, you know, some people think they don't know what's going on with it. They'll take it to the dealership and they'll rip them off. They'll just charge their battery for them. So get you a maintainer if you don't have a kick start, and keep it on the maintainer. Uh, just get a quick quick plug in. They have it that comes with it. You hook it to the battery, you know, drill a hole in the plastic, come out in the bottom there and let it hang down and you know you can just quick connect it every time you're done riding for the day. And uh, a good maintainer, not the one I have, because it's a piece of crap, it's a DeWalt. It's not even that old, but uh, we'll be able to keep it maintained and not just say that it's fully charged. Uh, Secondary kickstart is a must. You don't even need a battery. I showed you in the video. You can run these things without a battery. That's you got to have that kickstart. I hate that they're making them now without it. It is an option that you can add to your scooter. Of course, you have to put some different parts in there, and uh, you know have a different cover plate that has the kickstart uh, stuff in it. Uh, the spring and everything, when you kick that down, it spins. It spins that little thing I showed you on there with the with the knobs on it to grab that and spin the variator. 
kick it off, you know, at the clutch or whatever. So make sure you uh, add that option, or buy a scooter that has that option. They've they've stopped doing that recently. It's just everything, cars, scooters, motorcycles, everything has less and less options uh, these days because it's cheaper for them to make them without them. And they get to service your scooter every time you bring it in because something's wrong. That's so simple. You know, they can charge you. It's, uh, it's really a scam. They, they, sh they should all come with that, regardless. I, I hate it. But anyway, that's it. Uh, that's the video for this week. Um, I have this came in. Maybe uh, Wednesday, maybe Wednesday I'll film it. We'll try to get a video next week. Put on YouTube. This is the uh, door handle. Uh, driver's side for the Ford Fusion that I worked on. The Ford Fusion is doing great. Uh, they said it's ran better than when they bought it. So that fixed the transmission with that problem. Uh, they've been using it more because it's 50 degrees down here. But uh, I just want to show you this now. I'll show it to you again whenever we get there. All the insides here, all, all this stuff, sprocket everything, uh, is plastic. It's plastic. It's, it's trash. This is why this will be the sixth time it's been changed. And this will break too again, you know, not long after I put it in, I'm sure. I, uh, I just, I'm disappointed this is a 2010 Ford Fusion. And this is a huge issue with these. It's not that complicated to make a door handle. They've been making them since they've started making cars uh, with doors. And for Ford to cheap out like this and make this all plastic, all this internal stuff plastic, the whole thing is plastic. The only thing metal on here is going to be this little spring. Let me see if you can see that. Uh, there, this spring in here. That's the only thing that's metal in this whole piece. It's trash. And that is extremely irritating. But we'll get on that next week. Show you how much of a piece of shit that is. Uh, super disappointing. I didn't know they had already had it replaced six times. No wonder the door insert on the inside was all tore up because uh, six different people had tore it off of there. And it's all plastic too. We're not going to replace that, but. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that it's not that hard to do yourself, but it's just extremely annoying because of how cheap everything is made. Uh, I mean, if you can't, if you cannot make a door handle, uh, just at least internal stuff metal because you're that cheap, then uh, you have you have a real issue with quality, with control. It's all about the numbers, and that's disappointing. These companies make hundreds of million dollars, hundreds of millions a year, if not billions, and mostly because you keep bringing your car in because stupid little stuff like this keeps breaking. Stupid. So I'm I'm pretty frustrated with that right now. I don't even know if I want to put this piece of crap in there. I know they're gonna break it not long after I put it in. Uh, I guess I will since I ordered it. I just feel like I'm wasting my time and their time because they're going to get excited about it. Start getting used to it again. Not having to roll the window down and reach out the window to open the door. They're going to get used. They're, they're going to take a while to get used to using the inside handle and then once they start getting used to that inside handle I guarantee you it breaks again and we go right back to uh, them having to try to get used to reaching out that window to open the door. 
that's pretty sad. That's lame. You know, Chevy, Ford, all of them are doing this kind of stupid stuff. I'm disappointed in it. I guess I'll just tell them to be gentle. Be very gentle with it. Because I was thinking maybe I could reinforce it with some steel stick. It's too complex. It's just looking in there. If I put that stuff in there, there's not enough room for it. Any, any kind of anything like that to put in there to, to kind of reinforce the plastic. Sad. All right. We'll see you next week.